I would like to thank you all for waiting patiently. Our live stream will begin soon. At this time, we are taking care of preliminaries, such as birthdays, anniversaries, and announcements. So now is a good time to let everyone know that if you have missed any of our services, they are all archived and available on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Over 100 hours worth of praise and worship and messages straight from the Word of God. Many revival services, homecomings, Easter services, and Christmas sings are available. Facebook is our main source where we stream live every Sunday. YouTube is great for watching many of our older streams. All videos are labeled under playlists, so if you're looking for a specific year or month, it's easy to find. And finally, if you are looking for a specific song or when the message begins, check under the description where everything is timestamped. We appreciate you choosing to watch our live streams and giving God the praise along with us. Thank you. screw it up. But when he does it, it's going to be all right. Amen. We always want to welcome the Spirit of the Lord into this place. Praise God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Get ready. Amen. That's all he wants us to do is make a joyful noise. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hold on. Gotta get my breath here. <laughs> you know, we gotta get down here in the diaphragm for this one. Get going now. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Glory, glory, Thank you. 
and this woman come in and she carried this little child. Mm -hmm. And the little child was, I'd say he was about my little Harper's age, about five. Mm -hmm. He did not have his legs developed. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have a savior. Absolutely. I know he can move a mountain to make that little boy's legs mm -hmm. to grow. Amen. Yes, amen. And it's true, we do have aches and pains. Mm -hmm. but, it, but you know, when I just sit and I think about what he went through. That's right, honey. I hurt from what, you know, and even little Harper, she'll say to me, Grandma, why did they beat that man? Mm -hmm. She watched it with me when she was three years old. Yes. And she did not forget. Yeah. She cried. Right. Three years old, she cried mm -hmm. when they beat him. Of course, I think all of us cry. Oh, yeah. That is, you know, I, it's hard to sit and watch that movie. Yes, the passion. Yes. yes. It's just so hard. Yes. But I know that we have a Savior, that he went for us. That's right. Amen. And I'm glad that he's taken me just like I am. That's right. Amen. I may not be on the top of a music chart. But I know God. But your name is down in the in, my, book in his of life. book. My name's in that book. Right. And he knew That's me. That's what's more important. I had fellowship with Jesus. That's right. Before I was even born. That's right. Amen. He knew who was going to serve him. Amen. He knew before we were even born. That's right. If we Sister were going to pick up and follow, or yes. if we were going to go with the devil. Mm-hmm. And I thank God. And you made the right choice. I thank God for my Aunt Wanda Lee. Amen. Who brought me to church. Praise God. And taught me about Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm I know glad she's did. close I'm to. I'm glad her. she did too. She's close to 100 years old, I would say, oh, wouldn't you, Pam? She, you know what? She's still moving. Praise she's the Lord. She's still going and ministering down at the uh, nursing home. That's wonderful. In uh, Point Marion. Mm-hmm. And I've got a late start. I guess I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> but it's all the way for Jesus. I love him. That's all that matters. And I'll do whatever he wants me to do. Amen. That means to move to a foreign country. All right. And I can't speak. Now watch it. what you're saying. I know. Because he's listening. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I'll go wherever he leads. All right. There you go. Wherever he leads us, Amen. I will follow. You'll follow. Give the Lord a hand, church. Is there anyone else that wants to testify? Hold on, we want to give you a mic. No, go ahead. It won't bite. It ain't got no teeth. We got to hear you on live stream. See, people want to hear you out there, honey. Well, talk about late bloomers. Okay. I am definitely a late bloomer. <laughs> but as you all know, I'm not a perfect soul. Nobody so is, honey. That. But the Lord has put something on my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's just touching. I mean, you, this is just amazing what God does for us Amen. in a song. I mean, I'm not singing it. I'm not there yet. <laughs> it's called Blessings. Blessing. I never looked at Blessings the way this song put it, put it out there. Yes. But just listen to each and every word because you guys are going to be impressed by this. If I was impressed, y'all was going to be impressed. Amen. Because it takes a lot to impress me. When I first came to this church, when I first came back, uh -huh. I wasn't all here. I mean, okay. Satan still had me on his shoulder. Okay. And I tried to strive. And I all right. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. You have to keep on keeping on. Yes. That's what you got to do, honey. You got to press on. Yep. And that's what I'm doing. Amen. He said, we pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family. Protection while we sleep. Mm -hmm. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. Mm -hmm. All the while, you hear each spoken need. Yet love is way too much mm -hmm. to give us lesser things. Because what if your blessings come through rain rain raindrops? Mm -hmm. What if all this rain we've gotten in the last year, those are blessings. Mm -hmm. And Lord, there's a lot of raindrops. What if your healing comes through tears? 
Mm-hmm. And we all shed those tears. Amen, honey. And who knows, we might be getting healed through Barb's tears when she cries for me. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't know that. Amen. But I never did think of it like that. I don't know if you all. But this touched me like nothing, nothing has ever touched me. What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your need? Mm-hmm. And I, there's a lot of nights I didn't sleep. And if you just could feel his presence, he's right there with you. Yes, he is. Yes. Absolutely. And if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've, I've just never thought of it like that. The trials of this life being my mercy. We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. Mm-hmm. We cry in anger mm-hmm. when we cannot feel. Mm-hmm. You near. Mm-hmm. We doubt your your goodness, we doubt your love, Mm -hmm. as if every promise from your word is not enough, all the while. Mm -hmm. You hear each desperate plea, and long that we'd have faith to believe. When friends betray us, and I'm sure we all have had those friends, when darkness seems to win, Mm -hmm. we know that pain reminds this heart that this is not our home. This place is not our home. No, it's not. What if my greatest disappointments or the, or the aching of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst Thank this you, world Jesus. can't satisfy? Hallelujah. What if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights are your mercies in disguise? Mm-hmm. Good Lord, Thank bless you for that and I'm blessing you. Today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, well, we was going to do that other song. Hold on a minute, I got something. No, go ahead, honey. Go ahead. Help yourself. I just want to thank Jesus today for bringing Chelsea here today. I'm so proud of that young lady. We've had a little bit of time to chit-chat, but I'm very proud of her. She has a goal in life that's all about God, and it's all about young people. That's mm-hmm. what we need more of in this world is mm-hmm. children. Well, she's an 18 year old, mm-hmm. but she's a, a, a child in my eyes. I'm 64, so yeah, you're a kid. But, anyways, <laughs> uh, she, her heart is for the children. Yes. And I thank Jesus yes. that she, I think she started here. So Zor sent her out. She did <laughs> yeah, she started here. She's so, pretty as a picture. Yes, yeah, she is. She always was. But yeah. I thank God that He is doing this with her. and guiding her and directing yeah, her in this path because the children of this world need kids like her That's and right. more of them. Amen. More of them. Amen. I thank God for her today. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Well, we were going to do 86, but the Lord changed it. So we're going to go to 124. I've got a new home. Aren't you glad we have a new home? And this world is not our home. We're just passing through. We're just strangers. Some of us more than others, but praise God. But I've got a new home over in glory. And just think about it. It's mine. And nobody can take it away from you. Only you can do that. So let's do this song, I've Got a New Home Over in Glory, 124 in the Praise and Worship book. Oh, we 
Just beyond the shining. 
of my beautiful wife and Mama Faye. Is anyone perfect? <laughs> no, not one. No, not one. We've all made mistakes. We've all made bad decisions. We've all had... Oh, yes, please. We've all had setbacks and failures. The key to that is, is don't let it enslave you to where we do not enjoy thank you, son, our Christian lives. Because it can and will. Right, sissy? Yeah. We let it. Yeah. We can start out a new beginning and yet be miserable. 
We let it happen, though. We let it enslave us. We let our past. You come and you have a new beginning, a fresh start. Who don't like new things? New clothes? Yeah, new shoes? Uh -huh. New boots? Huh. New houses? Justin? Justin? Who don't like new things? New cars? That new car smell? Come on now. I bet you Jesus even likes the new car smell. You think? When you get that new car and you're driving it home, and of course Christ's sitting right there beside you, because he's the one that provided it for you. He's probably going, that smells good. The new car smell. I know God likes new beginnings because in Genesis, what did he say in Genesis? He made a new heaven and a new earth. And what did Jesus say all the way in Revelations? Behold, I will make all things new. So I know my Lord likes new beginnings. And then he gives us a fresh start, a new beginning. When you turn your life over to Christ, you have a new beginning. That's why it's called being born again. How much fresher can you get than that? Can you imagine going back into your mother's womb for the second time and being reborn? How much fresher can you get than that? That's why they use that, being born again. Because it's just that. A fresh start. A new beginning for you. Isaiah 43.18 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God says there in verse 19, I want you to have a fresh start. Behold, I will do a new thing. He wants you to have a fresh start. John 10.10 10 says, in the latter part of that verse, I'm going to go there first, he says, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. They may have a more abundant life than what you previously had is what he's talking about here. He wants you to seek the kingdom first, though, and then all these things will be added to you. I forgot to write where that's at, but that's a quote also from his word. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom. Then all this stuff will be added to you. Amen. The blessings Renee was talking about, seek the kingdom first. They will be added to you. He wants you to have a more abundant life, a new beginning. But it also says at the beginning there in John 10, 10, what's that say? The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't want you to enjoy your new life. He doesn't want you to enjoy your new beginning. He wants you to live in the past. And if you do that, it's your fault. He provided us a way out, and it's called being born again. A new creation. If you're the same you that you was before you hit the altar, that's on you. That's on you. But that's what the devil wants. That's why he starts hammering you. Huh, son? As soon as you get up from the altar, what's he do? Before you even reach the door, he starts hammering you. Why? He don't want to lose us. I was a good warrior for Satan, but I'm better for Christ. He didn't want to lose me, though. But that's, that's, that's what we do. Our thought pattern starts, well, I've made so many mistakes. I failed God so many times. Yes, I did for decades. Come and go. Come and go. I failed him time and time again. I failed him. He never failed me. I failed him. Relational failures, moral failures. You're so ashamed of some of the stuff you've done. Me, I know it, I hear you, me. You're so ashamed, you hope nobody ever finds out about it. God already knows about it. And regardless of all that, Isaiah 43, 18 says what? Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Do we not see that? Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. Stop beating yourself up. That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to look back at your past. He wants you to say you're filth, you're dirt, you're nothing. God says I'm something. God says I'm something. 
So don't listen to what Brother Frank calls him, the little puke. Don't listen to the little puke no more, because that's all he is, dirt under our feet. Stomping, brother, that's right, stomping. That's what we're supposed to do. That song says what? Put him under our feet, right, Brother Allen? What's that song? Stomping. Thank you for the water, son. We're all getting dry already. It's all this wind coming out. <laughs> we need to look to the future, not the past. We need to look to the future for a fresh start. How, how, you might say, how, preacher, how can I get a fresh start? I've did all this. I've been, I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to tell you. Here's how we do it. Start. Start. That's how you do it. The S stands for stop making excuses. You know how I could have wrote a book on the excuses I used and told my daddy and my mama. <laughs> I could write a book. Matter of fact, I might do that. It might help someone. Stop making excuses for all your failures. Stop blaming other people for your failures. Stop seeing yourself as the victim. Other people can hurt you. Other people can harm you. Other people can scar you. But the only person that can ruin your life is you. They don't have the power to do that. That's right, brother. Choices. You may have ruined your whole life up to today. But it is up to you. It's your choice if you ruin it for the rest of your life. You've got a choice to make. You've got a choice to make. Accept the responsibility and accept your part in the problem. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He who covers his sins will not prosper. See, you can cover it up. I covered a lot of my sin up for mom and daddy. Oh, yeah. Right out of it. <laughs> Doesn't mean I didn't do it. But they didn't know I did it because I lied about it. See, I covered it up. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. You want mercy? Confess it. Admit it. Accept your part in the problem. This goes for our everyday life. If you have a tiff with someone at work or whatever, accept your part of the problem instead of thinking they're the total problem. Accept your part in it. If we admit it, the mistakes, we admit our failures, we admit our sins, then we get what? Mercy. Another chance. Guys, I'm telling you, if we have tiffs or a disagreement with your wife, okay, the first words out of your mouth should be, honey, I'm sorry I was wrong, and let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. A word of advice. That's hard. I know, but you gotta let it go, brother. Gotta let it go. Especially when you don't know what you need. Yeah, it's, accept it. <laughs> Just accept it and let it go, let it go, let it go. <laughs> yeah. She's gonna have this recorded. She's probably gonna pl play this back, Dustin. She'll continue. She'll keep this. Or Justin. T. <laughs> Take an inventory of your life. Galatians 3, 4 tells us, Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. Learn from our mistakes. You have to learn from your mistakes. You see, failure can be your friend or your foe. Just like sis said there, right? The failures, the tears, the sorrow that we feel could actually be our friend. Depends on how you act, how you receive it, how you if you learn from it, or if you repeat it. See, I was in the repeat mode. <laughs> Do it bad, step back and repeat. Do it bad. Look, what's the shampoo bottle it says? Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> I thought that was my life. Well, yeah. <laughs> I won't go into detail. <laughs> But it can be your friend or your foe. I know people that are 40 or 50 years old, me included, but don't have 40 or 50 years experience. 
because they live the same life over and over, year after year. They never learn nothing. So you might have all those years under your belt, but you don't have a single year experience because you didn't learn from your mistakes. I have a couple decades worth of unlearned stuff because I didn't learn. I kept repeating the same mistakes. We need to sit down and think our way through. Take an inventory. Uh, what's your assets? Do you got your health? Some of us do, some of us don't. Some of us, it's our own doing while we don't have good health. Uh, you got your freedom? Thankfully, we're an American. We still do, as of right now. But you need to vote. Are you mentally sound? My wife may differ, but yes, I am. Do you got some friends? Do you have church family? If you belong to this one, you have church family that you can count on. That's how you can get a fresh start. Who can help you? That's what you want to look at too. Who can help you? A friend, an accountability partner, a support group. There's plenty of support groups out there. You don't start over by yourself. You need someone to walk with you. And let me tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ is that someone that will walk with you hand in hand, problem after problem, failure after failure, mistake after mistake. He's right there with you if you hold on to his hand. You're the only one that lets go. He never lets go. He's right there forever and ever. A, I'll try and get through this. I'm talking too much in between. Act in faith. This is an important one. Okay? Act in faith. Launch into your new territory. When you get up from this altar, if you go out that door and life is the same old, same old, you're the same person at work, you're the same person in your relationships, or you're in the same relationships, or you have the same friendships, you didn't leave it all here. Because you cannot go right out there and continue the same life that you left. How is it being born again, a new, fresh start, if you go out them doors and do the same thing all over again? Doesn't make sense. It isn't a fresh start. It isn't a new beginning. To change your circumstances, it takes faith. Because you're so drawn to that same life pattern. You're so drawn to that same road that you was on. But you got to make that turn. Right. You've got to make the turn. It takes faith to change your personality. Ask my wife when she first met me. I'm a whole different man today than I was then. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Because trust me, our personalities, you probably wouldn't have liked us as much as you do now. My wife even loves me more. <laughs> You have to have faith. Matthew 9, 20, 22 says, And suddenly a woman who had flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garden, garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. What made her well? She was bleeding for 12 years. 12 years. Do you not think she went to the doctor at least maybe once or twice in them 12 years? I'm sure she did. Do you think they exhausted every pill, every cure, every remedy, every salve, everything that they had in that day? Do you not think that they tried everything? And she still bled for 12 years. But... Your faith has made you well. In an instant, she was healed. Because of what? Faith. Her faith. We don't realize what we have in our pocket. When Christ comes in your life, all you have to do is have faith. So many healings are not transpired because of the faith. All he asks us to do is believe. Believe. That's it. That's all you have to do. And you 
say, well, it's easier said than done. I know. Been there and done that. But I'm just telling you what the Word says. It's all we have to do. It's all we need. I lost where I'm at here. 28. Uh, Matthew 9, 28 to 30. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. Not his, not the doctor, not the house owner. Their faith, according to their faith. Their eyes were open. What are you expecting in life? Is things in your life going to be better or are they going to be worse? It's up to you. What is your faith telling you? Is it going to be the same old, same old, same old thing in your life? If you're thinking that, then you're having faith and you're believing that that's the way it's going to be. Now, if you think it's going to go better, and you think, I've got the Lord on my side. I've got a good church family on my side. It's going to get better. Then you're having faith that it's going to get better. And trust me, it will get better. In order to start acting in faith, you've got to stop the pity, pity party for yourself. Feeling sorry for yourself. Poor, poor, pitiful me. I'm such a victim. Life is so unfair. Of course life's unfair. Who said it was going to be fair? God didn't say it was going to be fair. As a matter of fact, he said there'll be troubles in this life. Do we not read the Bible? Do we not understand what he says? There's going to be trouble. You're not going to have a life of roses. But it's how you react to the problem is what ends up being sometimes the problem. The world is filled with sin. That's why it's unfair. It's not God's punishing you. The world is just engulfed in sin. That's why it's unfair. Stop having the pity party. Stop rehearsing your past. Stop regretting the past to where it gets you depressed. Get on with the present and the future. That's what counts. See, it's a new beginning, a fresh start. Forget about that. Look to the future. Look to the present. Next one. Let's see. According to your faith, it will be done to you. Because, see, whatever you focus on is what you reproduce in your life. So the next one is refocus, is the R, refocus. Refocus what? Your thoughts to change your life, to give you a fresh start. You have to think, rethink the way you think. Because if you have the same thought pattern that you did before you give your life to God, something's wrong there. You should have a different thought pattern going on. Proverbs 4.23 tells us, Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do, everything you do flows from it. Amen. Everything. If you've got a heart of gold, it shows. If you've got a heart of coal, let me tell you, it shows. Amen. People know if they want to even talk to you or not. Right. So if your phone doesn't ring, you might want to look in the mirror and say, hmm, nobody wants my advice. Uh, and my phone doesn't ring, what's oh, it's Who cares? Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. If you're depressed, if you're thinking discouragement, if you're thinking distressed, it's because you're thinking depressed, discouraged, distressing thoughts. The way you think, you can think yourself well. Mama used to always tell us that. She's having a hard time doing that right now. But she told us that. You can think yourself well. Or, on the reverse of that, you can think yourself sick. Right. Poor, poor, poor me, I'm so sick, I'm sick. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you never get sick or the doctors and pills and stuff ain't important. Yes, they are. But it's you, it's your thoughts is what can make you push forward or sit there in your own little pity party. 
If you're acting fearful and worried, it's because you're thinking fearful and worried. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Mind. Your mind. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how you refocus your thoughts. That's how you quit thinking the same old patterns that keep you in the dark. You're still rehearsing the same memories of the old. It is hindering you from getting the fresh start that you need in life. Because you keep thinking and keep bringing up what's back there. Bible says what? Let it go. Let go and let God. You have to change your mind and get rid of those painful, sinful, hurtful, shameful things. Stop focusing on what you don't want and start focusing on what you do want. Stop focusing on the old stuff, the old dirt, the old shame. Start thinking about the happiness that you want in life. Put that in your mind. Replace the memories that you have. Think about something else. And what can we think about? Focus on God's Word. We all should be doing that. Life will be so much better if you do. Instead of thinking on what so-and-so said about me or what so-and-so said and rehearsing that in your mind, which only brings more grief, start thinking happy thoughts. Amen. Start thinking happy thoughts instead of bad thoughts about so-and-so or being a gossiper and a backbiter. Shouldn't have that in a church. No. If we didn't have that in the world, the world would be a lot better right. place. But God forbid we should not have it in the church. Right. Psalms 1, 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delightful is in the law of the Lord. And, he, and in his law, he meditates day and night. Meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers uh, of water that brings forth its fruit in its seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither and wherever he does and whatever he does shall prosper happy are those who are always meditating meditating just means rehearsing it over and over and over in your mind that's what meditating is think on God's word the more you meditate on God's word the happier and more successful you will be it's a promise from God. Stop seeing ourselves as other people see us. Stop seeing ourselves and we begin ourselves seeing ourselves as God sees us. That's where the change takes place. If God forbid, if I would look and see myself as other people see me, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. No, you wouldn't. No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I'd be too ashamed to walk through those doors mm -hmm. if I looked upon myself as a lot of people look upon Mike's old life. See, that's the key, the old life. They keep reliving the old life. I have a new beginning. I have a fresh start. My Lord took all that away. And he can take anything in your past away. He can change your thought pattern if you let him. Let him is the key. Right, Pastor? You don't have to be that gossiper that talks about so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. But that's all you did. They knew, boy, if they, you tell so-and-so, oh, I don't know it. Now, Mom wasn't as bad as the backbiting and stuff, but, boy, if you had a secret or got someone a gift, don't tell Mom because they'll know about it. Mom would tell Somehow, some way, she cannot help herself. She'll say, but I didn't know. I guess I did. She, didn't, she just talks about it and says, boy, you're going to like the shirt you got or the boots you got. I just out of the blue. They just don't, don't tell her, Mom. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Yeah. <laughs> just act surprised, she used to tell me. That. <laughs> She'd tell me, because Dad would get so mad, she'd tell me what I got for Christmas. 
So you can help her stuff. But there's a bad side to that too. You, you know, there's certain people that talk about certain things that they shouldn't keep. They should just zip them out. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Lord could you just super, super glue their lips shut. Some of them, that's what it might take to super glue the lips shut because they can't keep them shut on their own. Uh, okay, I'll go on. <laughs> the next one is T. I preached on this in my last sermon. Trust. Trust God to help you succeed. Depend on Him. We've already proven we can't do it. We've already proven we have not got the ability to make ourselves a better person. God's the only one that can change you. God's the only one that can change your mind through his word. That's how it is. Some people just don't get it. They stumble and they fall and they say, well, I'll just try harder. Hey, we sis, we've fall, fallen many times and come back to the Lord and said, I'm just going to, I'm going to try harder. I'm going to try harder. <laughs> you can try hard all you want, but instead of trying harder, try living smarter. Rely on God. Let God do it because he's the one. If you give God control, I promise you, I guarantee you, your life will be better. Zechariah 4, 6 says, So he said to them, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that's close. Not by might, nor by power. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. You see, we can't do it on our own recognizance. We can't do it in our own self. That's right. If you do, you'll fall. I tell you, I've tried it. I've tried to do it all on might. You can't do it. It can't be done. Amen. I don't care how big, how mighty, how powerful you think you are. <laughs> You're nothing. You will not succeed by your own strength or power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. God specializes in new beginnings. Jesus Christ has the power to do that. It's called be being born again. Guys, I'm going to have you guys come on back up if you would, please. Everyone has a chance to start over. Everyone has a chance for a fresh start. I don't care if you're 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Doesn't matter your age. That's just your earthly years. What it matters is your spiritual side. What have you given to God? Everyone can begin this new year. We're only a, what, a couple months in. God says, I don't want you to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to give you a whole new life. Amen. A whole new life. All we have to be is willing vessels. Be willing to change the way we think. Be willing to change the way we live. Be willing to change from the road we're going down to the road he wants us to go down. Be willing to make that U-turn. That's all God wants us to do is just be a willing vessel. Mm -hmm. Don't you make the turn because you could be going down the wrong road and then just start to oh, take this road. It still might be the wrong road. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of roads out there. A lot of dead ends out there. Mm -hmm. Not until you decide to go on the road that follows what Christ's plan is, what his destiny is for you. Everyone's got one. Got your plan, you got God's plan. It could be your job, it could be your relationship that you're in, it could be the friends you keep, the company you keep. It might be hurtful. You might really enjoy your job, and then God says, That ain't where I want you. But Lord, I, I love everybody I work with, I'm really comfortable here. Ain't where he wants you. You can stay there if you want, but you won't be miserable. It will become miserable because it ain't where God wanted you. God has a plan for our lives. It's up to us to take the bull by the horns and make the commitment. But you see, then, once you do that, 
God takes control. Jesus, take the wheel. It's a country song. You sing that. Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood, yeah. Let him have the wheel. I've wrecked so many cars, I don't want to count them. I've wrecked my life so many times, I don't want to count them. Let Jesus take the wheel. Get a new beginning, a fresh start. It's your choice. How can you have this fresh start? You start by stop making excuses, take an inventory, act in faith, refocus your thoughts, and last but definitely not least, trust God. That's what he gave me today for everyone, myself included. I love it because when I get these messages, Lord knows I need them. I need them more so probably than you because I spend a week or better studying them, putting them together so it gets engraved in my heart and soul because I spend time in God's Word. I spend time in... If you would just do that, you could feel Him in you. That's all He wants. He wants to be in your life. He wants to be a part of your life. If you've been keeping him at bay, let him in. Let him closer. You might sit in his pews week in and week out, but you still need a closer walk with God. You still need a lift. You still might need a new beginning, a fresh start. That can happen today. You can walk out that door a different person than what you walked in. All it takes is a little touch from God. Just a little touch. What do we got, brother? Thank you for watching Zor House of Prayer's live broadcast. We stream live every Sunday morning and would like to invite you to come out and be in service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11 a.m. We are located three and a half miles past the Morgantown Mall on 19 South. Take a right onto Sugar Grove Road for a mile and the church sits on the right with a sign at the foot of the hill. Thank you and God bless.